Hello, Mr. Taylor. So let's take a look at the second lesson that we have in Unit 6. This one, of course, we're still looking at scatter plots and association. But here we want to go a little bit further in the scatter plots and, and, and talk about interpreting clusters and outliers. Before the lesson is over, you will learn how to describe clusters formed in a scatter plot. Some key vocabularies to keep your eye out for a cluster and outlier. So the author gives us this particular graph, and we got a couple things working here. First, he tells us that a cluster is a set of closely grouped data. So we're talking about the duration and intervals in minutes. So this is what we're talking about, this vibrant data right here. And it says data may cluster around a point or along a line. So we're looking at two different uh, two different types of, uh, of clusters here. And so we say that, well, okay, so I think I have lift off. So we looked at two different types of clusters. We're looking at, uh, let's see, here, I don't want to move it, so let's just put a circle around it. If we looked at this particular set of data, and here we would say would be a point. Well, you see, there's other points that's clustered around it. Okay? And then if we just go up here and just, and just, just for the sake of doing something and we create a line. Well, I think I want to make that look a little bit better for us so we won't well, I think I can do that. Yes. And we create a line. So let's say we created this line and this line went something like that. Well, as we can see that this particular sets of data cluster around this particular line. So this is what the author is telling us, the two different types of clusters that we'll see. We'll see a cluster around a point, which is here, and we all see a cluster uh, along a line, which is this particular set of data. Well, anyway, there's something else that we want to take a look at. And this is just for future references as we go along within the, the lesson. If the point 20 and 1 appears on the scatter plot, so we're talking about x is 20, or should we say intervals in minutes is 20, and duration is 1. So if this particular point appeared on the scatter plot, would it be an outlier? So this is something I want you to contemplate as we go forward. Look back at the definition where it says an outlier is a data point that is very different from the rest of the data point. Okay, so think about this as we go on with the particular lesson. Well, the author says scientists gathers information about the eruption of Old Faithful, a geyser in Yellowstone National Park. She uses the data to create a scatter plot, which is this data here that she created. Each one of these particular uh, points here is an eruption. The data shows the length of time between eruptions in intervals and how long the eruptions last. Okay. So what I want you to do is go back and look at the data. Pause it right now. Make sure you get these questions down. Describe any clusters that you see uh, in the scatter plot and what do the clusters tell you about eruptions of Old Faithful and describe any outliers you see in the scatter plot. So go back. Now, please don't include this presently. This is just something that I put here as, as something that we're going to talk about at the end of the presentation. So don't include this in your data that she collected. Okay. Look at your data and then answer these three questions. Uh, please come back when you're done and see if we correlate. Also, 
take a look at the reflect questions. Have two of them. Suppose the geyser erupts for 2.2 minutes after a 75 minute interval. Would this point lie in one of the clusters or would it be an outlier? And then explain your answer. So you have to go back to your, 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 your graph and look at 75, which is probably here, and it says two and a half, which is here. Okay. Now, suppose the guys erupt after 80 minutes interval and give a range of possible duration time, which the point on the scatter plot would not be considered an outlier. And then explain your reason. And again, go back and do exactly what I just did here. You're looking at 80 minutes and what did it say the time was there? Um, well, it's asked us to give a possible a, a possible amount of time. So we would go to 80 and determine which one of these would be a time. And I think it said that would not be an outlier. Correct. OK, so go ahead and do uh, the actual ABC as well as 3, 4, and then come back and we'll, we'll conclude. Well, A says, describe any clusters that you see. There are clusters around the 50 minute and the 80 minute intervals. So let's go back and make sure we see exactly what they're talking about. So right here, you notice where I circle this? There is, your, there is your set of clusters. And remember that that's a cluster around a point. Look at the way that's set up. So that would be a cluster. And then also at 80 minutes up here, this would be a cluster. But this cluster is more so a cluster uh, about a line, or should I say, along a line? That makes sense to you. What do the clusters tell us or tell you about the eruption of Old Faithful? The authors say they are short wait time followed by short eruptions, and longer wait time followed by longer eruptions. So I think we can go back and look at our graph and see, can we see that? Uh, we see two, well here's, let's look at the 50 minute. I see 50 and almost two, maybe one and three quarters, then two, then a little bit above two. So very, very short time that the eruption will last. And then as we go up here to 80, if we look start at 80, I see one here that's like three and a three and a quarter maybe. And then it goes as it goes up, uh, there's one up here that's roughly actually I see three actually that's maybe four, four and a half. So that's a little longer than the times that we see down there. So again, I guess the author would be correct by saying that there are short wait times followed by uh, short eruptions and longer wait times followed by longer eruptions. And describe any outliers you might see or you think you see in the scatter plot. So it says 57 and 3 appears to be an outlier. So let's go back and look at that. Now again, we're not looking here. So this is 50, this is 60, and then they say that 57 and 3. So they're actually talking about this particular point right here because it's not associated with a, this particular cluster. It is not associated with, and let's, let's change this up here. It is not associated with this particular cluster and it's also not associated with this particular cluster. Then the author defined that as an outlier. Now, the math talk. And it said to us, well, what about if we were to put 20 and 1? If it appeared on this scatter plot, would it be an outlier? According to the definition that he just gave us, it would because it's not associated with this particular cluster and it's not associated with that particular cluster as well. So, yes, according to what the definition says, the definition of an outlier that the author gave us, 
it didn't fall near to either one of the clusters, so it would be considered a, an outlier. Now, three. Suppose the guys erupt for 2.2 minutes after a 75 minute interval. Would this point lie on one of the clusters? Well, they say no, so let's go back to the graph and take a look. So we're looking at 2.2 and 75. 2.2, which will probably be right here, and then we're going over to that's 70 and 75, which is 60, 70, which is somewhere there. Again, cluster, cluster, it would be considered an outlier. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. Um, would the point lie on one of the clusters? We said no. Would it be an outlier? Um, well, yeah, it might be because if we definite we def what we define, but it's a possibility. It's not. It's it's not far, but it's not too far either. And then number four says, suppose the guys erupt for 80 for an 80 minute interval and give a range of possible duration times. So again, the author says three to five minutes. So let's let's go and look. See what we see what we see. I think it's always best to go. So we see 80. And then as we come up to 80, notice the first data point right here, starting at three. But the other data points up here ends at five. So yes, the author would be right. We're looking at data that's running from three to five. So I guess I would definitely say that his assessment here would, and we are at right here, his assessment would be correct. All right, if you have any questions about this, please place, place your comments in the comments section. And if you have not done so, please subscribe as we go through this new math procedure for our eighth grade in Texas. I'll see you soon.